This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at limiting and excess reactants. So let's start with a question. How many sandwiches can be made with 12 pieces of bread and 7 slices of ham? The answer is 6 sandwiches, which would require 12 pieces of bread and 6 slices of ham. In this example, the bread is limiting the number of sandwiches that can be made. And one slice of ham remains. So if this were a chemical reaction, the bread would be the limiting reactant and the ham would be the excess reactant. This is because the bread is limiting the number of sandwiches that we can make. And after all the bread has been used up, we have one slice of ham remaining. So next, we look at how to determine the limiting reactant and excess reactant in a chemical reaction. So first we look at the definitions. The limiting reactant, also known as the limiting reagent, is the reactant that limits the amount of product that can be made. And the excess reactant is the reactant that remains when the limiting reactant is consumed. Next, we look at three steps to calculating the limiting reactant. The first step is to calculate the amount in moles of each reactant. The second step is to divide the amount of each reactant by its coefficient in the balanced equation. And after dividing, the lowest value is the limiting reactant. In our first example, 50 grams of N2H4 is reacted with 75 grams of N2O4. Determine the limiting and excess reactants. The first step is to determine the amount in moles of N2H4 and N2O4. Starting with N2H4, we divide the mass in grams by the molar mass which gives us 1.56 moles. Next, we do the same thing for the N2O4. That's divide the mass in grams by the molar mass, which gives us 0.815 moles. Once we've determined the amount in moles of each reactant, we now need to divide by the coefficient. For N2H4, it's 1.56 divided by 2. The reason we divide by 2 is that the coefficient of the N to H4 in the balanced equation is 2, which gives us 0 0.780. And for N to O4, it's 0 0.815 divided by 1. Once again, we divide by 1 because the coefficient of the N to O4 is 1, which gives us 0 0.815. Next, we compare these two values to see which one is the lowest. So we can see that the value for the N2H4 is the lowest, therefore it is the limiting reactant. And N2O4 is the excess reactant. The next step in this example is to determine the amount of excess reactant that remains at the end of the reaction. To do this, we need to look at the molar ratio of N2H4 to N2O4. So from the balanced equation, we can see the ratio is 2 to 1. Next, we'll use the molar ratio to determine the amount in moles of N2O4 left at the end of the reaction. We have 1.56 moles of our limiting reactant, which is N2H4. We are then going to multiply it by 1 over 2 because of the molar ratio we looked at earlier. And this gives us 0 0.780 moles of N2O4. So this is the amount in moles of N2O4 that react completely with 1.56 moles of our limiting reactant, which was N2H4. The final step is to subtract this amount in moles from the original amount that we calculated in the previous slide. So that's 0 0.815 minus 0 0.780, which gives us 0 0.0350 moles of N2O4 remaining. So let's move on to our next example. 3 grams of zinc is reacted with 50 centimeters cubed of 1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. Determine the limiting and excess reactants. So first we'll determine the amount in moles of zinc. So like in the previous example, we'll divide the mass by the molar mass. And this gives us 0 0.0459 moles of zinc. To determine the amount in moles of HCl, we need to use the equation N equals CV, where N equals amount in moles, C is concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, and V is volume in decimeters cubed. Note that in the question, we're given the volume of the HCl in centimeters cubed. So in this step, we'll convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. So as we can see, 50 centimeters cubed 
is equal to 0.05 decimeters cubed. Next, we'll multiply the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed by the volume in decimeters cubed. And this gives us 0.05 moles of HCl. So the next step is to divide the amount in moles by the coefficient in the balanced equation. For zinc, the coefficient is 1, and for HCl, the coefficient is 2. So this gives us 0.0459 for the zinc, and 0.0250 for the HCl. The lowest one is the limiting reactant, therefore it's the HCl, which means that zinc is the excess reactant. Next, we'll determine the amount of excess reactant that remains at the end of the reaction. To do this, we need to look at the molar ratio of zinc to HCl. From the balanced equation, we can see that one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of HCl. So in this step, we'll determine the amount in moles of zinc that react with the limiting reactant. To do this, we multiply the amount in moles of HCl by 1 over 2. This is because of the 1 to 2 molar ratio of zinc to HCl. So this gives us 0.0250 moles of zinc. So the final step is to subtract this amount from the amount in moles of zinc that we calculated in the previous slide. And this gives us 0.0209 moles of zinc remaining. So that's all from this video. In the next video, I'll be looking at how to calculate the theoretical yield.